Hi everyone, welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the JK Latch and implement it in static CMOS, pseudo NMOS, dynamic, and C square MOS style logic. Okay, here we go. Here, if you see at the topmost side of my screen, you would see a JK Latch diagram at the gate level. How is it different from an SR latch? An SR latch would have two inputs for its NAND1 and NAND2, that being nothing but S and enable or clock. And for the other NAND, it would be R and enable or clock. Enable or clock, any one can be used. Whereas in a JK latch, my NAND1 and NAND2, if you observe carefully, does not have two inputs, but has three inputs. For NAND1, the three inputs are nothing but J, clock or enable. In this case, I have referred it to as clock. And the third input is Q bar of the previous state. For NAND2, the three inputs are nothing but K, Q of the previous state and clock. Here I have written the truth table for our reference. When my clock is equal to zero, that means any change on J or K would not be reflected and my JK latch will hold the previous value. You can easily do this by putting clock equal to zero. You will come to know the different outputs for NAND1 and NAND2. That would be one and one each. And then you can just see that NAND3 and NAND4 form a basic NAND base SR latch. And you can easily get this truth table verified. So that is when clock is equal to zero. So this circuit becomes active when clock is equal to one and the truth table is as follows. When my both inputs are zero, it still holds the previous state value. When it's zero one, the output Q is zero, Q bar is one, one zero, it's output Q is one, Q bar is zero. And the case which is very interesting is when both my inputs are one, my output keeps on toggling. Again, we have seen this in the previous classes, so I'm not going into the details of this. Currently, what we are keen on is to implement this in the static CMOS style, very similar to how we implemented an SR latch. Only change would be NAND1 and NAND2 now are no longer a two input NAND, but a three input NAND. Let's quickly see that. Suppose my output Y equal to A dot B dot C, the whole bar, this is a three input NAND. Hide the bar, whatever is below the bar is nothing but my pull down circuit in this case A and B and C. So the pull down comprises of three and more transistors connected in series. Whereas the pull up, you will have exact complementary to pull down. So three PMOS transistors connected in parallel. So if that is the visual in front of you, and if you observe this, this is nothing but an AND1 where you see three and more transistors in series and three PMOS transistors in parallel. And you see that the NAND one has inputs J, enable or clock, anything is fine. And Q bar and here also the same. So again, I'm repeating that you can use either clock or enable. It's completely fine. So this is NAND one. Similarly, NAND two, I've drawn a three input NAND. Again, the inputs are K, enable or clock and Q. If you can see it from your gate level diagram, you'll again verify it to be the same. Similarly, we can make NAND3 and NAND4, which are a two input NANDs, which are drawn here and here respectively. And we have given the corresponding inputs to this NAND gates as it's shown in the gate level diagram and made all the connections. And this is nothing but my static CMOS style JK latch. Very straightforward. You have to just replace the gate level NANDs with the transistor level NANDs and just see your gate level diagram and label all the inputs and make the respective connections to the outputs. Let's quickly go ahead and see a pseudo and more style JK latch. The only change would be the pull up would be replaced by a PMOS who is always on. That means its input is grounded and is equal to zero.